Welcome. You don't know what to say to that back, do you? It's like, it's, I've been talking about it as we've been coming in. It's not evening yet, so I can't say good evening. And it's not morning, although half of you did say good morning on the way in. But how about Merry Christmas? Merry Christmas? There we go. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Christmas Eve here at Our Saviors. You're here and you are welcome. Take a few deep breaths, or maybe just one or two. All right, you made it. You're here. The kids are here. The ham is not burning. I can almost guarantee that. Take a couple of deep breaths and prepare to be soaked in the music, in the tradition, in the love of God, in the story, in the sacrament, and in the candlelight. May that Christmas peace and joy be with you all. Take some time to share that peace and joy with a few folks around you this evening. All right. Now would you rise together with me as we welcome one another with our opening carol, O Come, All Ye Faithful.
The people who walk in darkness have seen the light. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Those who dwell in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For to us a child is born, for to us a son is given. May the grace and truth of Christ be with you. Amen. And let us pray. Almighty God, you made this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that here on earth we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence, and in the last day wake to the brightness of his glory through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. <laughs> Christmas time was approaching. Snow was starting to fall. Shoppers choosing their presents. People filling the mall. Children waiting for Santa. With excitement and glee A little boy tugged at my sweater He looked up and asked me profound I looked around to thank him he was nowhere around the little boy at the mall he might as well have had wings sing in love. 
The reading is from Isaiah 9. An ancient prophecy of might and joy that we trust is fulfilled in Christmas. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them the light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Behold, a Christmas prophecy. Thanks be to God. As we sing angels we have heard on high, we'll gather this evening's offering.
I invite you to stand as you are able for the reading of the Gospel of the Incarnation. This is certainly a familiar text. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph, Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and the family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver the child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them at the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to the shepherds, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on per... per bleh, excuse me. Let's try that again. And on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go down to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When the shepherds saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The Christmas Gospel. Thanks. You may be seated.
I'm not sure that that's exactly what the angel sounded like, but it's got to be pretty darn close. So I need, the, and I, I need the youngest among us to join me for the children's sermon over here in the corner. I'm way over here in the corner. We got we to gotta get, get the shepherds down to Bethlehem. Come on back, way over here. I need some kids to be shepherds because there's only one here and a couple of sheep. So if you want to be a sheep instead of a shepherd, you can do that too. We've been, we've been tracking this journey of, of the Holy Family, the nativity from, where, from Nazareth to Bethlehem. And Mary and Joseph made it. They made it yesterday, and, and she's been really, really tired. And, but the angels just said that some baby has been born over there in Bethlehem and has told the shepherds all about it. Were you paying attention when you heard the song? Were you paying attention when Pastor Karen read the story? That's a question, were you? Yeah. Did you? But yeah, all right. So you heard it. And so maybe we better, somebody, somebody want to carry a sheep, and, be, and, he, and we got to go on down to Bethlehem. Somebody want to carry one of the shepherds? All right, let's. And the rest of you get to either be sheep or shepherds. And if you're a sheep, you can make sheep noises. If you're a shepherd, just keep on saying, Come on down to Bethlehem. Let's go. Come on, let's go on down to Bethlehem. Come on down. Follow me. We got to go to Bethlehem. We got to finish off the nativity. We got to come on down to Bethlehem. Come on over. If you're, a, if you're a shepherd, come on down. <laughs> this is Bethlehem. You get to be a shepherd too. There's a guy with a shepherd's cook. We can use that. Come on down. All the animals are there already. Look at that, Mary and Joseph. And look in the manger, just like the angel said. It's Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> just like the angel said, so let's get those sheep up there. <coughs> All right, where'd the, where'd the shepherd go? Oh, there he is. All right. Anybody else want to stand up there? No, 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 not tonight. The, our, our, our nativity is almost complete. Now, those guys over in the other corner, the wise men, they don't get to come for a week. 12 days, actually. So, But we're here. It's, it's, it's the story, the final steps of the nativity. Thanks for helping me. Thanks for being a shepherd. And if you were a sheep on the way, that works too. You can head back to your family. Thanks for helping us finish the nativity. You got to come along on the journey. You got to kind of help sing the song. These verses that we have been singing tonight, this story that we've been retelling tonight, now you, if you want to shut off the lights, you can do it now. That's awesome. She went that way. She went that way. There we go. <laughs> These verses that we've been singing tonight, the ancient words of the ancient prophecy, the story that we've been telling, the old, old story of the night, the holy night, raises a chorus in our hearts, pulling our minds and our souls up into the sky with the angels, with the army of angels, and back into the manger with the shepherds and the baby. Oh, that baby. Love is that baby's name, setting us free. The original language named him. The angel told Mary, that's what you got to call him. You got to call him Yeshua. You have to call him Jesus, and it means the Lord saves and Mary said, well, let it be to me as you have said. And then she sang, and so do we. Oh, come, let us adore him, we have sang. This, is, this, is, this one name is an echo of the ancient prophets. They, they said he would be named these amazing things, the highest, most holy, light of light, eternal. Those ancient predictors of his birth said we would call him and so we do. We don't need to ask the shepherds and the angels, even though we already did in the song, why your joyous strains prolong, or why is your song of joy so deep and awesome? We know. For it is ours to echo those gladsome tidings, those 
love-fueled good news words, these things that have inspired our earthly song. Now, we're not angels, but the truth of this saying is, is as true for us, for you, for all of you, as though we were Gloria in excelsis Deo indeed. Deo is God. Excelsius is excellent, highest, and Gloria is praise and glory. So why should we sing that? Because that's what people who are loved, that's what people who are loved like this, that's what they do. God is here. That's what Christmas means. God is here for you in love. That is what this journey means for you. No matter what, that love is what makes this, oh, a holy night. No matter what, the blessings of the angels to the shepherds, do not be afraid, is for us. As God shepherds our broken hearts through, through everything and through anything, the wonder of the holy night can move kings and emperors, stars and the cosmos itself. The wonder of the holy night is the wonder of love, love for all, love for every single human being, no matter our status, no matter our fears, no matter our wounds, no matter our doubts. Love has set us free. And when people are loved like that, well, then they sing.
Thank you, Tom. The communion that we're about to share, we're going to preface, we're going to work our way, sing our way into that as a congregation, singing the words to a tune that you will recognize, Angels We Have Heard on High. There's a little bit of introduction that I will sing, and then we'll sing together the important parts of getting ready to proclaim and live into the gift of this communion, the gift of Emmanuel, of God with us as we experience it in this bread and wine. May the good Lord be with you. Lift your hearts to God in praise. You rise together as you are able as we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
This next is sung to the tune of I Heard the Bell. given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. This is my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this to remember me. You may be seated. In a moment, the ushers will be inviting you forward. We'll be serving communion at four stations. There is grape juice in the inner ring of each tray. If you need gluten-free wafers, you'll need to come to one of the center stations. There'll be two center stations at the front of the center aisle and one on each of the side aisles. If you can't come forward, the team finished first will serve you as soon as we can. As you come forward, um, you'll be, after communion, you will be given the candles for the candlelight portion of our service this evening. Please feel free to join in with the carols that we'll be singing during communion.
The thanksgiving for this gift of God will be sung to the tune of God, Rest Ye Merry Gentlemen, and we'll sing it together. gentle reminder as we light the candles this evening, please never tip a lit candle. The Gospel of the Light. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came into what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory. The glory as of the Father's only Son, full of grace, full of truth.
I invite you to extinguish your candles at this time. However, we certainly remember that Jesus Christ is the light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome. And I would invite you to stand as you are able for our benediction and our closing hymn. And so you will be joining in on the benediction. Thank <laughs> you.